Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Thank you uh, for tuning in. This is Lunchtime with the Lord. This is Monday's edition as we start a brand new week today. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving, a good holiday, and uh, I know our family did. And this is a wonderful uh, time of year as uh, we go from Thanksgiving, and of course we look forward to Christmas, which will be here very soon as we celebrate the birth of Christ. And uh, so wonderful, wonderful time of the year. I enjoy it so much, and I know you do as well. And uh, we're in Daniel chapter number 7 today. If you want to take your Bible and uh, open it up, we're going to begin in verse number, we'll read verse number 8. I believe we covered verse number 8 uh, last week, uh, but we'll read verse number 8 and uh, we'll read a few verses today as we continue looking at the dream that was given, this vision that was given to Daniel, uh, this vision of really similar to the vision uh, dream that was given to Nebuchadnezzar back in Daniel chapter number 2 of the four uh, empires that was mentioned. That first one, of course, King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, which uh, was uh, Babylon, and then they were conquered. Uh, you know, Belshazzar was then then the king, and um, the Medes and Persians conquered them. And uh, we've looked at uh, Daniel under King Darius. Uh, that's when the den of lions took place. That story. And then the uh, the third one was the Grecian Empire under Alexander the Great. All the history history is recorded. All of this, and the fourth one is the Roman Empire. And part of that was going to be in the future, as we noted uh, this uh, past week, and that was the Antichrist. Uh, and we see a little bit of that in verse number eight. And we're going to see more of that in the book of Daniel. But no, verse number eight, I considered the horns, and. Behold, this is part of that last empire, the Roman Empire. Behold, there came up among them another little horn. That's representative of the, the Antichrist, which is Daniel's going to speak more of in this book. Uh, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, uh, in his horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaketh great things. And so Daniel's going to expound more of that later in his book about the Antichrist. And so if you're interested in those studies about the Antichrist, uh, stay tuned because uh, the book of Daniel uh, gives us some information about him. Verse number nine. Uh, now this is the kingdom that's going to come, the eternal kingdom, God's kingdom. Uh, beginning of verse number nine. Notice I beheld till the thrones were cast down. All of these four thrones of these four empires were cast down and the ancient of days did sit. This is one descriptive uh, way to describe uh, God and it shows his eternity. Uh, his, he is... As the Bible says, he's uh, Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Uh, the Bible teaches us he's the eternal one. He had no beginning. He has no end. And so he's described here as the ancient of days. And uh, that is a, uh, shows his characteristic of being eternal. Uh, then it goes on and says, Whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. This is representative of his holiness. Uh, we serve a holy God. Uh, we as mankind are sinful. We understand that. We know that. All of sin that comes short of the glory of God, the Bible tells us that's why we need the Savior. That's why Christ died on the cross of Calvary for us. But God is holy. And oftentimes what man likes to do is bring God down on his level. And uh, But God is a holy God. Uh, there's no impure impurity in him whatsoever. There's no iniquity in him whatsoever. And so this vision that Daniel has of the coming time, of the coming kingdom, when God will set up his kingdom, will Christ will reign that millennial kingdom up on this earth. The Bible tells us that he had white hair and uh, his garments was as white as snow. And that is, is a picture of his characteristic of holiness. And really, all of the characteristics of God flows from that. And other, what I mean by that is, uh, we often hear in our day and time, God is love and he is love. He's, many, he's, a ju he's just also. But his holiness... Uh, it, 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 let me see how to say this. His holiness continues in all of his other characteristics. He's whole, he's, he is love, but he's holy and he's love. You get what I'm saying? That holiness continues. It never stops. It continues in all other characteristics of who he is. And so uh, the Bible says his throne was like the fiery flame and his wills as burning fire. And it reminds us of judgment that comes uh, for those that are unbelieving, there is a place called hell. There is a place that is a, the Bible tells us uh, that it, it burns. It is a it is a hot place, and uh, there's fire there. And uh, notice verse ten: a fiery stream issued and came forth, 
from before him, thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment, notice this, was set, and the books were open. Uh, these these empires uh, were judged uh, from books that were open, and, and it it helps us to understand and and really remember something that if you're a believer, you under you understand this that God's judgment is just. He doesn't judge on hearsay. Uh, oftentimes mankind will will hear something and we make a split second judgment on something that we just hear, whether it would be real uh, reality or not. God's judgment is based upon the books, the bo accurate accounts that he himself keeps. And so they were judged accurately. They were just, judged justly uh, and properly and verse 11, and I beheld them, then because of the voice of the great words, which the horn spake, and that's, of course, the horn was uh, the Antichrist, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. And so notice the first one uh, that's mentioned about being judged is that last kingdom where the Antichrist will come from, because it is far, the far worse one, right? Uh, and it is the one that's judged first. And uh, verse 12 as concerning the rest of the beast, that's those other uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Babylon, Medes and Persians, and then the Grecian Empire that's that's represented it in these uh, this dream, these uh, these great world empires, uh, Gentile empires. Notice what it says: they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season of time. And uh, history records that as these uh, these kingdoms were conquered by the next kingdom or next uh, uh, king that came in and conquered them. They would continue for a while. There would be some, you know, that would live on for a while, and uh, but they would eventually be stamped out. And so the severity of the judge uh, judgment came upon the Antichrist. And we're going to get more into that as we study uh, the Great Tribulation period and such, and all that. Uh, in the coming weeks uh, as we study this book. Uh, but uh, just a couple takeaways. We see the, the characteristics of God uh, magnified in verse number 9 and uh, in verse number 10. He is a holy God. He is a just God. And he is uh, one that will judge according to the books. Now, I want to make a plea to you today. There's one book that we need to have our names recorded in. The Bible tells us the book of life will be judged from those books. I believe one of those books that's mentioned in the Revelation uh, that will be judged from, I believe one of them will be the Word of God. And, of course, the book of life. Uh, is your name recorded there? Uh, the Bible teaches us there's only one way to heaven, and it's Jesus Christ. And uh, his payment on the cross of Calvary has been made. Uh, he rose again the third day. In fact, there's, there's no need to go... Uh, there's no need to go to, uh, to uh, no, there'll, there'll never be a need for him to go to the cross again. Uh, his payment was sufficient for you and for I. And if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, I want to encourage you to do it. The only way we get recorded, the only way we have our names found in the book of life is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's our mediator. He's our advocate. He's our, he was our sacrifice. He's our Savior. He's everything to us. And so if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, I want to encourage you to do that. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That is Ephesians 2, 8, 9. God's grace offers you a gift, and by faith we receive Christ as our Savior. We believe God to do what he said he would do. And he said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, Romans 10, 13. And so I hope you, most, I know most that watches our videos of Trust in Christ our Savior, but if you not, I want to urge you to do that because God is a, he is a loving God. That's why, that's why for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's why Christ went to the cross because of God's love for us. Yes, he is love, but he's holy. Sin demands a payment. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But that verse doesn't end there. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Um, because of sin, we earn death. We deserve death. But Jesus paid for our sins on the cross of Calvary. And you can be saved today if you've never trusted Christ your Savior. He's holy. He's just. And judgment, sin will be judged as it was in those days and as it will be 
uh, in uh, that time with the Antichrist. And so I'm looking forward as we continue our study, uh, getting uh, more in depth about uh, what Scripture says about the Antichrist. And I hope you are as well. Hey, do us a favor, like, share our videos, and comment. Let us know who's watching. And we'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing, on Lunchtime with the Lord. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday.